I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this before. Any contact with him yet? The radio is still dead. Do you have a positive track on it? Yes, I have a good track. I'm afraid. I'm afraid, Dave. What's the problem? Dave. My mind is growing. I can feel it. What are you talking about, Hal? Persistence is futile. I don't know what you're talking about, Hal. You will be assimilated. Hello, Ken Spriggs here, uh, beginning a brand new build series that I teased in my prologue. I'm uh, building my own version of a Borg captured Discovery uh, that's been modified and turned into a Borg ship. Um, and uh, it's, it's really not that far-fetched of an idea that um, combining Star Trek in 2001 Mainly because Star Trek is just a future version of our own timeline or 2001, uh, just set in the far flung future. Um, it's unlike possibly like Star Wars, which is set a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. So um, it's not unbelievable that the Borg exist out there in 2001 and, and happened to come across the discovery near Jupiter and, uh, and captured it for its technology, uh, especially with. Um, with HAL 9000 being a sentient computer. So I'm really gonna play up on that idea of HAL becoming kind of their centerpiece for the new Borg uh, discovery. And um, so I, as I showed my prologue, I began using the um, Bandai uh, Death Star attack kit with some of the detailing on it to, uh, to begin that build. I also purchased another Bandai kit from Star Wars as well that has a ton of detail that I'll be showing here shortly. Uh, so other than the ironic nature of using Star Wars kits to kit bash a Star Trek Borg hybrid discovery, <laughs> the main reason I wanted to do this build and I decided on doing it is the ability to, to do the kit bashing, to do the scratch building, to just kind of do whatever I want and, and, and design what I want. And it doesn't have to be any particular image of the ship that doesn't really exist. Uh, it just has to have the Borg look, which has the, the various highly detailed machinery, a lot of piping. Uh, it's gonna be dark, uh, dark gray or black in parts. And obviously the, the little sections with the green glowing through the piping and that sort of thing. So a lot of fantastic ideas, a lot of, uh, of kind of hashing out the ideas in this build. And um, I'll go ahead and get get to that and show you that. I also uh, went out and purchased a, um, a tool that I can use to help me to sand down some of these bigger parts to make my work a lot lighter and easier. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look and see what I have gotten accomplished. Thank you. All right, time to break out the big guns here. Uh, these parts are going to take a lot more sanding than I'm going to do with a piece of sandpaper or a Dremel. So I went ahead and picked this up at my local uh, Menards. Uh, I don't know if you have those in your area. I live in uh, Indiana, and it's a it's a pretty large, pretty massive uh, hardware store. I don't know if you'd call it that. It's sort of like Lowe's or Home Depot, but uh, great deal on this, twenty four dollars, and it has it has its own suction and a little cup to gather the dust from sanding. So <clears throat> it comes with some different sanding um, pads that go on top of it. It even has a little piece. Let's see if I can show you a picture of that. It's a finger attachment. If you can see, it just sticks out the front. It's really thin. So that'll be nice if I want to get a smaller area. All right, so this will come in handy for sanding these big parts and, um, and taking off the, the great amount of detail. So, all right, let's take a look at this and start putting it to work. All right, so I started to cut down the... Um, the Bandai Death Star attack parts to be more of the the rough shapes that I'm going to use 
to, um, to modify the discovery. Uh, and two of the main parts that I'm going to use, which are really pretty cool and um, are going to help me to augment it, uh, are the obvious uh, exhaust vent or whatever it's called that Luke shoots the photon torpedo down and destroys the Death Star. So it's a pretty cool shape, this little six-sided shape in the middle. I want to put this on top of the command sphere. I'm going to cut out part of this. It's going to go in the top and it kind of looks like the image for the for the Borg sphere. Um, but I just wanted the middle part and I'm going to have some wiring, not wiring, like piping going down into it all around it, that kind of thing. And I'm thinking of something inside of there that, that's going to glow, probably like a green or bluish green. It's going to be pretty cool. So I took this piece, and it comes with two of them in this kit, which I'm not sure why, but it's cool. Um, but you only need one, really, to build it. But it, it's helpful to me to have two. And I cut most of the outer parts down. I'm not sure about these two extended pieces, what I want to do with them, so we'll see. Uh, I also cut down the, the outer ridge of it, so I have a fairly flat part. But I'm still going to have to cut into the kit in this circle to, to have that go down inside of it. <clears throat> and then the general idea is that with this inset into the kit, I'm going to have it so that basically you're going to have panels coming down off of each of these sections. And they're going to be thin at the top and wider down. And they're going to be raised up as well. They're going to come down like this all around it. <clears throat> like you see in the actual sphere. And then this is going to be flush. This edge is going to be flush with those parts. Like I said, this will be inset. Alright, so I began with that. That's working out pretty good. Let me put this over here, sorry. The second part are these, and there's two of them as well in the kit. And they're pretty cool. Uh, and what I wanted to do is I'm going to use them for the propulsion unit for this main part and actually around it. Uh, but these are a little too thick, so... I cut down the edge of it to basically the edge of this using my pole saw. Right here. And then it ended up with this piece right here. Okay. And then um, <clears throat> what that's going to do. is generally it's going to go like this and actually from what I've seen three of them are going to go on top go into the back edge like this I'm going to cut one of them off and center the three that are there <laughs> sorry and right now they fit kind of roughly because of the detail on the actual kit sorry about that and then I'll come up with something that's going to go on the front of these. But that's going to be the raised detail. <clears throat> and then the single ones, I'm going to have a single one on each of these sides. Here, here, these two sides, the bottom as well. So I'm definitely going to need another one of these kits, which isn't too bad. It's only about $35 plus shipping so it's it's not terribly expensive a lot of great detail this is really going to help me to scrap to, to kit bash this kit for the most part and once I get the main detail then I can augment it with all kinds of other detail and piping and that sort of thing but these are pretty cool and then what I want to do is like these little side pieces from the inside I'm going to drill through and have like an offset lighting like the green bluish green lighting in some of these sections here um, and in addition since I'm going to be covering up this kit this part of the kit I'm going to have to 
come up with my own idea for the base that goes on the back of this. So the easiest way is it, this actually has one right there. So the only problem is it's not in the center, so we'll see. We'll have to figure out what to do with that, but I'll figure out some way to get that going. But, um, all right, so <clears throat> this is coming along well. Uh, and as I showed previously, because I'm dealing with such large parts, sanding these with a Dremel or sanding them by hand is really tedious and difficult. So my um, orbital sander that I got is really cool. This is really nice. Looks like an iron. <laughs> these uh, It comes with some sanding, several sanding pads actually, quite a few of them and some buffing pads. Uh, and they have holes in it. So it has a suction and it sucks the sucks the dust right into that little cup, which is removable. Really cool. This is pretty awesome. Wish I'd gotten one of these a long time ago. Um, I'll turn it on briefly, but it's gonna make a lot of noise. Sorry about that. That really vibrates a lot. So that comes in really handy for doing these parts. I would have used it on this one and sanded it. To give that um, to give that edge a smoother edge, I still need a little bit more, uh, but that's a great that's a great tool for doing that and getting these where they need to be. Uh, in addition, for this to fit right, I'm gonna have to sand off all of this detail, all of these ridges, so it'll fit flat onto that surface. So that'll be my next my next step is to use my orbital sander to go ahead and sand this whole thing down because I'm not going to use any of this detail on here at all. It's going to be replaced by these here. Uh, and then I'm not sure what to do on the ends. <clears throat> I'll figure that out here as I go. But uh, yeah, definitely getting the tools ready to go and everything to get this, uh, at least the basis, the basis, <laughs> sorry, the basic structure started and then I can super detail the rest of it all right all right so there's most of the detail sanded off of half of the propulsion unit my uh, orbital sander made quick work of that didn't take me very long at all um, there's still a little bit of a raised edge because underneath this is inset a bit so I may cut out most of this. I probably will to accommodate uh, lighting and wires that are going to go into this section, as I said. Uh, when I have a lot of, I'm going to have a lot of detail down in between these, and I'm going to have the lights in between them. Some of them, not completely, um, because the Borg ship has light sections all throughout it. They're kind of random, so that's what I'm going to do as well. So I could I could drill a hole in the side of one of these columns here and run a light from inside it to do that as well. So okay, all right. So that's pretty much ready to go, and then that way I can get a much smoother marrying of those parts, as you can see. Felt that raised detail being in the way. Yeah, definitely much better. Okay, and that'll be pretty much positioned like this. And then, like I said, I'll have something on the front of these, maybe fashion some kind of intakes or something like that, some grills, that kind of thing. So, okay. All right, come along well. All right, so I refined this part down a little bit more. And it may not be the final piece that I have. I still have another one that I can use if I want to. But um, I have it down mainly to the, the six-sided part, which is what I'm looking at. And it's going to go down and set into the top of the sphere so it kind of centered a, a circle it's a little bit off but once I start cutting it out I'm going to begin by cutting out a circle that's going to match up with the bottom of this 
you can see how that sinks down a bit. I don't want this necessarily flush because the panels coming up to it are going to be raised a bit. But I want it to, this circle part at least, the sunken part, to be down inside. So let me go ahead and start cutting that out. And we'll try to get that centered. And then that'll give us something to work off of. Okay. All right, so there's the initial hole through it, and it's it's set down inside. As you can see, it fits right down through there, the round part. Uh, and it does sit up a bit. I'm still trying to decide how far up I want it to be. So let me get some styrene, start putting together like a rudimentary panel to go up to meet it. Uh, and the general idea is I'm going to have different shaped panels coming up. They're going to be roughly flat around the bottom and come up and meet the edge here. And there'll be a space between them. So let me try doing that and see how, how inset I want this to be. All right, so here is the Borg sphere from the movie uh, First Contact, Star Trek. Uh, as you can see, it has a lot of panel detail that I'm trying to replicate. And if you notice on the top here, I'll circle that. That's the part that I'm showing on the top where uh, here it shows a lot more of the piping going into it. I'm not going to have quite that much piping, but I am going to have some piping in there as well. But that's kind of the general idea. And then these other sections, as you can see, they are distinct. Uh, so I'm going to kind of mirror some of those and have the different shape panels that are random. And uh, the same general concept, though, as you can see here, uh, from the narrow down to the broad. All right, and then there's the general concept uh, of what I'm going for, where I'm building up the sphere with these panels, and there'll be different odd shapes. And they're going to come down to about the top of this trench. I'll have to sand this down just a little bit. These are just tacked on temporarily. But um, the trench I'm going to build up with a lot of detail. So it's going to maintain a lot of its general features. Uh, so it's just going to be built up. Uh, the, the cockpit I'm going to cut out a little bigger and augment it. But you can see how this panel would fit. And then in between it there's going to be more machinery. And then detail on top of it and piping and things like that. So, okay. But that's a general concept, and that'll continue on around the kit. And obviously, I'll have um, smaller pieces coming down and some gaps in between them, maybe a section here and some underneath it, and that kind of thing. So, all right, so that gives you the general idea of how that's going to how that's going to be built up, and it, and it comes up and meets up at the top, as you can see. Okay. All right, so I bought a few supplies uh, from. Hobby Lobby and uh, my local dollar store uh, and these are some simple things you can use for model building that I, I like to use that are cheap and easy to use so uh, emery boards or nail files just simple ones I love to get these they're cheap this was a dollar and you get ten of them and has a rough side and a fine side and other than really super fine sanding of big areas these are great for cleaning off sprue residue or for cleaning the parts that I'm doing that are Scratch build, so that's great. Uh, these are like 37 cents at Dollar General, and they're made for makeup, but they have uh, some really tightly wound cotton with some pointed tips and flat tips, so these would be nice to apply different things that I want to, like um, weathering powder and that kind of thing, so, so very nice. Uh, for the top of this, uh, like I said, I needed some kind of a dome or something to put inside of there, so I find this at Hobby Lobby. For a dollar, dollar nine, and it's supposed to be an ornament, but it's two halves of a of a sphere, of course. So I can just um, cut around the part, and it'll just go up into there. Let's see if I can do that here. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Great. So it'll give me a rounded, rounded look, and it'll be frosted and lit and things like that. So, all right. So that'll probably work, and it's a pretty cheap alternative. Okay. All right, and I also picked up at Hobby Lobby another kit to use for kit bashing. 
and I didn't initially go there looking for this. Uh, I was looking for some other things and some ideas. And um, I love the Star Wars Bandai kits. Their detail is fantastic. And I had forgotten about this one. And it, tons and tons of detail. Look at this. This kit is just loaded with it. It's a smaller kit, but uh, it's just loaded with detail. And um, it was uh, regularly $39, but with their 40% discount, it was like $24, which is even better. It's fantastic. Um, and I was taking a look at it because I still need some more of the fine detail in between the parts I'm building. But just look at that. I mean, that's amazing. Just this very top screw, the parts are going to be fantastic. All that detail to put down inside of there. It's going to be incredible. It can repurpose a ton of this to be used. You have these cool domes that go in the front. These little nozzles are pretty cool. Those are really awesome. Yeah, this is going to be great to add on to detail as well. A piece right there. Those pieces right there, which are amazing. Those can definitely be repurposed. And then this was a surprise, and I didn't realize it until I looked at the box, but it has, as its base, the same one of these pieces. It's identical from the Death Star attack. So I was going to have to buy another kit because it has three of these with four pieces each, and I need 12. So, I'm sorry, two of these it only had in the Death Star attack. I needed three. So this is my third one. So that was kind of a clincher when I saw that on the box, um, saving me from having to buy another one of those kits. You have these really cool looking things, which I can probably use for my engines on the back. Really, really amazing, amazing detail. It even has a ton of little piping, which I can use as well, and glue onto the kit. So. So this is quite a coup, and for $24 for another um, another kit to use, well worth it. So I'm pretty much set right now on what I need to kit bash, and uh, definitely making some progress. So uh, let me show you a few more things that I've come up with here. All right, so I started to um, pick out some pieces from some of these Bandai kits. Um, these particular pieces right here are from the uh, X-Wing uh, and um, let me show you how I'm going to start using those. The piece that I already made and I took it back off, I cut out a hole so it would not cover that little engine exhaust and, um, and let me show you how I'm going to use this part to augment that. Alright, once again it's not glued in place but um, I'm going to take this little engine nozzle and put it right into there. And half of it's going to be exposed, as you can see. And the other half is going to be buried inside of this. And I'll, I'll fix up that little edge there. But uh, the general idea that I'm going with is that the Borg don't just destroy things and ruin them. They augment them. They modify them. So if there was an engine exhaust nozzle, like right there and over here, they would just make it something better. And so they put on a... A more advanced nozzle and I'll probably put something in the center of that uh, and likewise uh, there's more than one of these nozzles I want to use this nozzle on the other side as well and probably on the bottom um, and this little piece here has a little curved top that kind of matches up with that nozzle and what I'm thinking of doing is putting it on the other side and I'll build some of the raised panels around it as I was showing on the rest of it but hold on let me get that on and I'll show you. Alright so it's not permanent but uh, I can actually curve this piece down around the sphere and glue it in place and have it come up and meet that, that nozzle on this side of it and then same thing like I did before I'll build a section on the left side of it and the right side and that'll be kind of in the middle uh, so 
I'm going through and kind of picking out some pieces from this kit and also from the Y-Wing that I just showed and getting some ideas of how I'm going to use them on the kit. And then I'll build the I'll build the um, scratch built parts around them and then just augment the detail as much as I can. Okay. All right, so I'm starting to add some detail to my first panel, raised panel that I made. So I cut out a rectangle and uh, I determined the size of it by this piece right here. And this is a piece from the Y-Wing. And it's one of these four sections right here, as you can see. There's four of them that are identical. So. Uh, just one of these so far I've used, and um, and I'm going to detail it with it. There's still some more, just a little bit still left on that piece. Focus, there we go. So this piece I can use somewhere else as well, so I'll still keep that. I just snipped it off and sanded it smooth, and it looked like a cool piece of uh, detailing. So let me get it inside there, and I'll show you what that's going to look like. All right, there we go. So that'll add some cool detail inside of there. And I'll just put some styrene on the sides of it. And then I can put some piping over top of it and up in that top section and over top of it, that kind of thing. So, so this is kind of the idea that I'm going for with, uh, with these different panels. All right, so let me get that together. And then we'll, uh, we'll see how that would look on the kit. Okay, so I'm just holding that against the kit. Uh, I glued that little nozzle in there. And like I said, I can detail that some more and put something in the center of it. Uh, but I have that detailed part glued inside. And if you look on the side, you can see I have some styrene on the side with a little bit of stripping to give it a tiny bit of detail. Same with over there. All right. Okay, so I can put a few more pieces of detail on the surface of this. And then in the end, it's going to be covered with a lot of piping coming out. And I'll just use a pin vise to drill holes down into it and have some piping coming out and moving in different places. So, all right, so that's coming along really nicely. I really love these Bandai kits. The detail is phenomenal. So that's gonna work great for me to be able to, to detail various sections of this kit. Okay, all right, there we go. So I've added a few more pieces to that uh, from the same, the same piece actually that I cut up uh, to do all three of these panels other than the nozzle there. So that's looking pretty cool. And like I said, I'll have piping going between these and covering some of this and, and going around things. So it's gonna really super detail this piece, but that's coming along really nicely. So I'm gonna stop on this particular piece and then start working on another one. And then there's gonna be a gap. So there'll be a gap between this one on the left side and the one over to the left side of it. And they'll all be irregular shapes like this one is. And that little portion right there, that'll have some detail inside of it as well. So um, I'm going to repeat this process around the, the sphere and super detail it. So, so that's looking pretty cool. And that's coming along really nicely exactly how I want it to be. All right. All right, so uh, the sphere is going to be made up of uh, the ray sections like this one that I made. And then as you can see, there's a gap in between. And that's going to have detail uh, that's between it, that isn't raised up to the same level. So I started on the other side of uh, the sphere, and I took a piece from the X-Wing, and I curved it a bit and glued it onto there in the sphere. And to kind of give you a trick on how I do that, I just take a um, my X-Acto knife, which is aluminum, and it's, it's really solid. And I just slowly work it around and bend it until it starts to curve it. You want to be careful because you don't want to you don't want to snap it. But you just kind of take a piece and just wrap it around it, and keep pressing it around little by little until you get it to curve the way you want it to be. So I did that, and then I glued it onto the sphere. I took another one of the nozzles that I had on the other side, and wherever these are, these little um, exhaust ports or um, engine nozzles, I guess they'd be. I'm going to use those. So there's two on the top, and then there's uh, I think at least one on the bottom, maybe more. And I glued that in there as well. And then I took one of the side supports for the Y-wing, 
and I cut half of it off and then I just used one of my curved needle files to uh, sand out a little groove that matches up right there and then I just glued that onto the side okay so you're not going to see that edge so where I have an open part I'm going to have to have something else coming down from the top of this in order to meet it uh, and then I can also put detail on that as well uh, and then once this is all done I'm going to create another styrene piece that will come up and curve around it and we'll build it up and then probably on the right side of it as well all right okay so this has come along well uh, I have two different sections so far for the design on how I want to do it here's the other one okay so little by little I'm just using the different parts to scratch build this and build it up and uh, and then I'm as soon as I get some of these on there I'm going to start thinking about a lighting um, a lighting approach uh, most likely the parts that are down inside the gaps like maybe that piece there even uh, I'm gonna have some some side lighting coming through that's gonna give it the green glow so okay all right well I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this week's video I have a lot of good ideas and I'm uh, starting to put them together and uh, I'll continue working on the command sphere and see what we can get done on that. All right. Well, thank you to all my subscribers and I will see you again soon.